Welcome inventors and entrepreneurs. I'm Stephen Thrasher and today we're going to we're going to answer George Cook's question about getting a patent application to issue faster. Why does it take so long? And he's right, it does take way too long. But first a little bit about me. I've been in patent practice for a little bit over 10 years and in that time I've been able to file hundreds of patent applications for inventors like you. And in that process, I've learned a few little tricks and I want to share a few of them with you today. Today, as you probably know, it can take two or three years to get a patent application through the patent office and issue as a patent. There are ways, however, to make this process go a little bit faster. These fall into two broad categories. One is procedural, and I'll talk about procedural ways to get your patent to issue faster second. First, I want to turn for a moment to really formally accelerating your patent application. And there, there are two categories we'll look at here. One is through petitions, and then one is through the standard tracks that are available today. Let's talk about petitions. Your patent attorney, or you, can file something called a petition to make special. Now this is the original way that patents were granted faster. They were granted for two primary purposes. One, because of something about the inventor. An inventor status, such as health or age. Or the invention itself, based on its category. So just real briefly, uh, age and health. In general, if an inventor is over the age of 65, a petition to make special can be granted. So the second reason that a petition can be granted is due to health. Now health doesn't mean that someone is terminal. A health issue means that that person will likely be unable to contribute to the examination of the patent application. So for example, Alzheimer's. Someone with Alzheimer's, an inventor with Alzheimer's, will not be able to contribute meaningfully to the prosecution of that application in a foreseeable time period. The second way an invention can be accelerated is based on the invention's subject matter. These are simply listed in a statute itself and relate to things like DNA. Now, inventions dealing with anti-terrorism, AIDS and cancer, energy conservation, and there's a, a list of other things that apply that are less common. One example of something that's invention related that's not dependent on the inventions category is an existing infringement. So if you filed a patent application and then a year and a half later while it's still in prosecution you discover that a competitor has copied your invention and is shipping it to the stores or even if they're merely making it and you're aware of it. You can file a petition and make special so that your application can be examined quickly and so you can then stop your competitor. The second broad category is for formal acceleration without a petition. These include, hold your breath, one, standard acceleration, and then secondly, what's called track one. Standard acceleration was introduced about 10 years ago, and it involves meeting specific steps and requirements uh, for filing with your patent application qualify under this procedure. That means that with it you basically prepare a first office action for the patent office. That's where you step into the shoes of an examiner, conduct a patent search, and then tell them what you found and why your invention is patentable over the stuff you found. It also requires that you at least be available for an interview with the patent examiner. And then there are a few other requirements that are secondary. The other way to accelerate an examination under formal examination is called track one. No, there's not a track two. Under track one, you simply pay a higher fee. And what makes this one interesting is that at least up until this year, there have been some limitations on the numbers of applications that qualify for track one examination each year. Now I'm just going to make up a third category and call it other because there are things that can be done to accelerate a patent 
applications examination in the patent office that are unrelated to these formal procedures. For example, one of them is that an agency head of a government can tell the patent office to make an invention uh, prioritized and accelerate its examination. For example, if the CIA has a special invention that they're aware of that makes communications uh, impossible to break between their agents, then the agency head, the head of the CIA, can tell the patent office, hey, make that examination fast. In addition, there's something called the glossary program. Now, this is not available every year, but when it is, it is powerful. Basically, the glossary program means that you provide strict definitions for elements of your invention. So your patent application then includes a definition section. Then by filing under the glossary program, your application is placed to the front of the line. What I love about the glossary program is that when I have seen it used, I have seen patent applications examined and allowed in three months. Yet another other way to accelerate a patent application's examination is something called the Patent Prosecution Highway. This typically involves foreign prosecution, but it's worth bringing up. So for example, if you have an application pending in both the United States and, say, Canada, and the Canadian Patent Office accepts and issues a patent on your patent application that's pending in Canada, you can then petition under this program to have your application examined in the United States more quickly. So I mentioned that there are two categories. One is through petitions and formal acceleration. And the second is through what we call just regular practice within the patent office. So you can accelerate your patent application by practice, by working with your patent attorney to do some really simple things. First, respond quickly to the patent office communications and office actions. Yes, you have six months to respond to office actions, but why wait? While the invention's information is fresh on the examiner's mind, is the very best time to get back in front of that patent examiner with a written response, or better yet, number two, a visit. Visit the examiner if you can. This is not as easy as it used to be because examiners do not all live in Washington, D.C. anymore. But if you can locate your examiner and get their consent and meet with them, it is my experience that that is like a booster on a rocket. It gets the patent application looked at more seriously with greater understanding by both you and the examiner and results in patent applications that get granted more quickly. A third hint is to focus on your narrow claim sets. Now this is beyond the scope of this video, but a narrow claim set does not mean you're stuck with just those claims. There are other things that you can do to keep broader claim sets pending. But if your goal is speed, a narrow claim set will get through the patent office much faster than a broad claim set. The fourth part to accelerating your patent application's examination by practice is to maintain great relationships. This means between you and your patent attorney or patent agent. We're on your side. They're on your side. Maintain this relationship through regular communication, um, financially, and really focus on viewing this relationship as a cooperation. You're on the same side. Make it work. The second part of great relationships are between you, the inventor, and your attorney as a group and the patent examiners. Patent examiners and the patent office do not view you as an inventor and your attorney as someone else. They view you as a group. So maintain good relationships with examiners. Take into consideration that the examiners have bad days too.
So if you will put into practice these recommendations by responding quickly, visiting the examiner when you can, going for narrow claims, and maintaining great relationships among all the parties involved, you will see greatly reduced times for examination without petitions or formal processes. Petitions and formal acceleration really get the first part of your what's called patent prosecution to go faster. That's the point from where you file the patent application until it's examined and they do have effect after the examination as well. Practice procedures don't cost you additional money and they primarily come into effect after that first examination. But if you take these procedures and put them into practice you will see two savings. First, with the more formal processes, you can cut the time it takes to look at your application the first time from two years to as short as three months. And then secondly, through good practice habits, you can cut down the time it takes to examine the application following that first office action, which is the first communication you get from the patent office from a year or two or three and collapse it into months. And just so you'll know, some patent attorneys refer to this set of practice as aggressive patent prosecution. So it's, it's not go after the examiner. It just means be responsive, be fast. So if you put these into practice in your own cases, you will greatly reduce the time it takes to get your patent application looked at and hopefully allowed.